Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 57 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through Ghost which is a Node.js based blogging platform. So Ghost is available either as a web application which means if we create an account with Ghost we can actually host our blog on ghost.org or we can even download their open source package and install it ourselves. Now, before we go through various different steps on how we can install it ourselves or on ghost.org or even creating a very simple theme, let's go through some of the prerequisites. Now, when we create blog posts with Ghost, we use this thing called Markdown to write our post. So Markdown comes in with a very simple syntax to write our paragraphs, headings, blog codes, images, hyperlinks, very basic HTML. So if you are not familiar with Markdown, I did this episode previously, you can go through it. As part of installing Ghost ourselves, I will be using AWS EC2. Although the steps will be really simple, if you want to get a background, you can check out this episode as well. And finally, Ghost is a Node.js blogging platform. Although you do not really have to know Node, if you want a background, you can check out this episode. So along with Ghost, which is a blogging platform, I also went through three other blogging platforms such as WordPress or Nanoc, which is based on Ruby or even Jekyll. So if you're interested to explore other blogging platforms and see for yourself which suits you better, you can check out these three. So let's start with Ghost. If you go to slash features, it will give you the various features of Ghost. Now Ghost is a very pretty young uh, blogging platform. It is 0.4.1 the version that we will be using. So the very first thing we will do is definitely go ahead and sign up on ghost.org. Now I have already done so, so why don't I go ahead and log in? So once you log in, the ghost.org will change slightly and here you will see there are many instructions and helpful posts as well as my blogs right at the top where you can go ahead and create your own blog. And later on, we will also download the Ghost source code to kind of host it ourselves. So why don't we go to my blogs right here and create a new blog. So when you sign up with Ghost, it will come with 30 days of free trial. And from here, you will be able to try out how to create blogs and kind of play with it. So let's go ahead and click new blog here. So why don't we give it a blog title, my travels, and let's say a URL. I'll just put in my URL and create a new blog. And once you do that, notice you can also add a custom domain, which we will not do as of now. And you will also be able to access your blog URL immediately. And in this case, it will be the blog title ghost.io. There you go. It is a very simple blog with the first post as welcome to ghost. And if you click it, it will give you the expanded post which will basically tell you various ways on how to format the post such as links, codes, working with code and etc. So the very first thing we will do is log into it so that we will learn how to create new posts and see other features. So let's log in and let's sign up. Now, once you sign up, you will now get inside the admin panel of Ghost. At a first glance, you'll see that it has a very neat interface. Over here, there will be the list of posts. And then you can click new post or even this little icon over here or even settings. Let's go to settings and see what they are. And yep, he, this is where you can change your blog title, description, maybe a little bit of logo, cover image. They are pretty self-explanatory. Why don't we go back to the content and let's learn how to edit it. And right here, let me go ahead and click the edit button. And this is exactly where it will bring you to the markdown syntax. On the left hand side, this is the markdown syntax. And on the right hand side, it will immediately show you how it, it will look like in HTML. And it will also give you some words, stats, such as how many words this is. And right at the bottom, you will also see the note update post, or if you click, you will also see unpublish, which means to say this is already published. And this is where you also add on the tags on the bottom left-hand corner. So if you include, say, travels and enter, 
this will be added on as another tag. So I can go ahead and now update the post. And there you go, your post has been updated, is shown as a little notification. Why don't we create a new post? So I'm just gonna create, click new post. And let's uh, give it a title. Beautiful Croatia, hello Zagreb. And then maybe another heading with say visiting the coast. So many beautiful coasts of Croatia. Very simple blog post with only 11 words. Now, if you come right at the bottom, you can either save, but let's go ahead and publish. So I'm going to click publish and you will see that it will become a red button, but we will have to click it one more time. So now when I go ahead and visit the blog URL, which is the blog name .io, there you go. You will see the second post that we just created. Now, as part of the settings of the blog, if you come right at the bottom and click this gear sign, you can also change the URL. So let's say instead of such a long URL, I just want it to be Croatia and I can just update the post. So notice here in the status bar right at the bottom left hand corner, it was beautiful dash Croatia, but let me just refresh it. And right now, the permalink will just go to slash Croatia. As part of uh, designing the ghost blog, why don't we go ahead and look at some of the themes? So in this case, we will go to a place called Marketplace. So if you just go to settings right here and go to themes right at the bottom, it will lead us to the list of blogs we have. And from here, we can just click edit. And this is exactly where we can upload a custom theme. So for this, I will simply go to marketplace.goals.org and let's scroll down and uh, choose a goals theme. How about this one, A4? So let's click this and it will typically bring us to the GitHub if it is available for free. And let's go ahead and download the zip because ultimately we will have to upload the zip file. And after we come to edit blog, let's choose the zip file. And there you go, we chose A4 zip file. So let's save the settings. And after the settings are saved, if we come back to our blog and let's refresh the page, there you go, a new theme is applied instantly. Now as developers, I think the fun is in getting the source code of Ghost and then installing it ourselves. So for this, we will simply go to ghost slash download and let's go ahead and download version 0.4.1. Now, if we go under the subdomain docs and then ghost.org slash installation, it also comes with very detailed installation steps. And this is exactly how I learned how to get Ghost working locally for me. And of course, for all the three platforms, Mac, Windows, and Linux. Great, so let me go ahead and unzip the ghost folder and I will simply cd into the folder. Let me open this up in Sublime Text to kind of see the structure of a typical ghost blogging platform. So when you download the ghost, you will typically see this. So there is a content folder as well as a core folder. And uh, inside the content, you will see data, you will see images, plugins, and theme. So in order to get Ghost to run locally, you will have to ensure that you have Node.js installed uh, in our computer. So once you have that installed, let's go ahead and install it. So we will run the command npm install dash dash production. So this will basically install all the dependencies, which is listed in package.json. So it's pretty interesting to go through the dependencies. As you can see, host will require a SQLite 3 database where all the posts are written and it will also require Express. Seems like we have done the installation. So in, from now on, it's really simple. All we need to do is npm start and it will immediately give us a local host number in port 2368. So we will go to our browser and there you go, a very familiar looking ghost blogging platform is installed. Now in order to access the admin panel from where we can create a new post, it is simply slash ghost. Great. So as usual, we can go ahead and put in our first name, email and password. And let's do a little sign up. 
And once you go inside the admin panel, which is in our local host, notice that it will look exactly the same as what we did on the course.org platform. So I will not go through the steps on how to create a post or edit it because that's something we already went through. And uh, I highly recommend the documentation itself, which is docs.gov course.org slash usage and there will be various steps and documentation on how we can use ghost or customize it now as an interesting note let's open up a mesa sql light app and why don't we look at the database that is running behind our app so there you go i am opening up mesa sqlite so i will go into the ghost folder under content data and there you go you will see the dot db file so let's choose it why don't we go ahead and show something very familiar to us why not the table posts and let's show all of them and there you go you see the title post and you also see the one with markdown as well as html and if you click html and yep you will see the entire first post right here. So this gives us a brief outlook into how Ghost is using SQLite to power up their data. Great, so now that we learned how to get it to set up on our local host, let's create a very, very simple theme. So for this, let's come back to the main Ghost folder. And if you go inside the folder content, you will notice there is a folder called themes. And this is exactly where the Casper default theme is installed. Why don't we go ahead and create a new folder and let's call it travels. For the purpose of creating a theme, we will create a very simple one. And for this, we will just need say three files. So let's create the very first file and it is called default.hbs which stands for handlebars and this is how we will be defining various variables. So let's start with the very simple doc type and next inside HTML we will have the head tag and inside the head tag just for simplicity I'll include the title and the title will be simply meta underscore title which means to say meta title will go back and fetch the title of our blog the very next thing we need to do is add in some ghost headers that are needed so for this we will have the variable called ghost underscore head and of course we will need to have body now how do we apply this very simple theme called travels to our blog for this let's come back to our admin panel and let's go to the settings and over here under theme we need to choose travels looks like travels is not appearing so i'm gonna come back to the command line quit and start the npm server refresh the settings page and then right at the bottom notice that travels is available so let me click that and save and now when we go to the local host once again with port 2368 Ah, notice it is giving a 500 error. That's because we need a few more files. The second file that we should be creating is called index.hps. So index.hps. Inside here, we will first have to include the default template. So for this, we will just say default, which means to say that instead of body, so let's include body right here. And we will have to include three curly braces and this portion will be replaced by whatever is in the index page so just for simplicity why don't we say simply hello and now when we refresh yep there you go we have the hello and if we go ahead and view page source notice we will get hello seems like i have a little error so i'll come back to the syntax here and uh, change the angle brackets with a little space and now when we refresh notice here this is the portion with the default template and the body partial is replaced with whatever it is in the index page now of course when we land on our blog we want a list of the post so for this uh, why don't we go ahead and create a new post and say to croatia and just for simplicity beautiful beaches so i'll go right at the bottom here publish now and click once again so now we have two posts to display 
So when we go back to our editor, instead of hello, let's have a loop. Now in handlebars, in order to do a loop, the syntax is hash and then for each, here we will include posts. And to end it off, simply do slash for each. Now inside here, let's say within an h2 tag, why don't I set the syntax to HTML? And we will also have a little hyperlink and the hyperlink will lead to the variable URL and it will also hyperlink to the title. Let's go ahead and refresh. And there you go, we will see the two posts. And of course we can come and add more variables. So this will basically give us a little summary. And when we refresh, yep, there you go, a little summary. So when we view source, you'll see once again, it is making use of the entire default template. And inside the body, it is basically looping through the posts with the title, the URL and the little summary. And finally, just for the fun of it, why don't we include something called the date? So here with the attribute date time, let's include format, month, date, and inside the span, we will include the format once again, date, month, and year. And when we refresh, notice here, it will be appended. Now this is of course a very, very simple example of a theme. So the final thing we will do is to create the individual post template. So when I create, click here, notice that it's going nowhere because we do not have the post template. So for this, we will come back here and create a third file called post.hps. And inside here, once again, we will start off by including the entire default template. This is to say that use the entire default structure with this section being replaced by what will be included in post.hps. So let me go ahead and rename this. Looks like I have wrongly renamed. And finally, this time it will not be a loop. So I'll just include post and end it off. And inside here, why don't we include within header one, simply the title. And also within section, we will simply include the content. And now when I come back and refresh, yep, notice the content is also here. And of course I can go back right to the home page with the list of the blog post. So that was a very brief outline on how to make a theme. Now at the least we need to have these three files and of course if you go to the default theme and you expand it, you'll see that there are other files such as license if you want to put this theme as open source and github and definitely a readme with a little bit of instruction. Also you have a folder called assets and this is exactly where your CSS, JavaScript and fonts go inside and if you want to link them to these files be sure to link them under the head tag in the file default.hps. I do take Casper as some sort of a guideline on how to create new themes but of course if we go to the documentation this will also give us a very detailed guideline on how to create coast themes. But I hope with this simple three files, it has given you a very brief overview on how to get started on creating our own theme. Finally, let's go to each of this post. So under settings, let me go to the edit and right at the bottom, I will click static pages. And once you do this, if you go to the localhost URL and then slash coast, slash API v0.1, this is where you will come across a JSON formatted data. And I think this is a very neat way to kind of collect every information about the post. And this is exactly where if you go to this URL slash API slash v0.1 post with some params such as status and static page, you will get to see every kind of JSON data. And of course we can go ahead and use this to create other static pages. So this is a very neat way to uh, get hold of all kinds of information about each blog post. Now as a final note, we will learn how to host our very own host blogging platform on AWS. So for this, let's go to aws.amazon.com. So we will go to AWS Management Console. From here, let's choose EC2 so that we can 
fire off virtual servers in AWS cloud. And from here, we will go to launch instance. Now we can of course go ahead and choose one of these operating systems which will come with no installation of node or ghost but AWS do come with uh, such installation so why don't we go to AWS marketplace and let's search for ghost there you go we can uh, take the very first installation and let's do a select so what this will happen that it will uh, fire up uh, AWS Linux instance and it will already come with the installation of node and ghost so let's go ahead and configure this this should be pretty simple so i will go ahead and review and launch and let's go ahead and launch it so we will choose an existing key pair or you can also create a new key pair if you want so i'll just use ghost ec2 that i created just now so yep i acknowledge and launch instance so looks like our instance is launched. So why don't we go to, and it is pending. So let's just wait for a little while until it is running. And there you go, it's running. So let me just go ahead and choose this instance. And if we go right to the bottom, we can grab hold of the public DNS. So let me go ahead and copy it, open it up in a new tab. And there you go, you will see the brand new ghost blagging platform installed. And all you need to do to access the admin panel is to go to slash ghost. And here you will see the very familiar login screen. Now I will not log in and go through the features because we have done it twice and it will be really all the same. But what we will do is SSH into our ghost instance. So from my desktop, let me go into the ghost instance in EC2 with SSH-I. And here I will choose the, the key, which is a .pm file. And after that, the username, which is typically EC2 if you're using Amazon Linux AMI at the public DNS, something like this. And once we press enter, yes, I would like to add it. And there you go, we are inside our Amazon Linux AMI instance, which is already installed with Ghost. So where exactly is Ghost installed? It is installed, if we go right to the root, it is installed in the folder var, dub, 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 and there you go, Ghost. And once you do a list of everything, you will see the familiar folder structure right here. Now, of course, I will not go through them as well because from here we can go ahead and edit either the content or the config.js as we want to customize. So let me go ahead and exit it. And if you are just playing with this instance, be sure to terminate it. Yes, terminate. All right, so that was a little introduction to Ghost. I hope it gave you a very brief introduction on how we can run the Ghost on Ghost.org platform or even run it locally or on EC2 instance on Amazon.com. Also, we went through a very, very small template, a very brief outline on how we can have our own theme. Now, Ghost is a very, very young platform and I highly recommend you to check out their GitHub repository where all the development news and activities go on, especially the roadmap. Now, the current version we are using is 0.4.1, but uh, this also gives a list of features that are upcoming it should be really really handy for us coupled with the previous documentation installation guide I feel that ghost will be really fun to work with if you want a node.js placed blogging platform and finally for the build link of the episode it is a YouTube channel by Joe Madelon. Now Joe has been very very meticulously putting up a lot of videos and they include videos specifically on front-end development including AngularJS, Gulp.js, Grunt.js and many many more. So be sure to check out this small very useful screencast on front-end development by Joe Madelon. That's it for this week's episode of Build Podcast. For all the episodes of Build Podcast, do go to build-podcast.com and you can subscribe via the six channels RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub, or Twitter. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.